Hello, welcome to the first in a series of videos for Photoshop for level design and level mapping and doing some creative processes. The level mapping 101 paper tutorials, uh, part one and two that are meant for Unreal Engine are on YouTube. So if you click on these from the document, you'll be taking Take it in here to uh, bit, an overview of all the materials and different uh, you, um, tools that you can use and a variety of map mapping techniques that's uh, back from the tabletop days. So we're going to go through player pathing, doing mini maps, doing uh, positive negative shape play, adding some water on there, playing with some watercolor paper, coming up with uh, the different objectives and parts and kind of setting a scene, telling a story. So that is all available through here. And then there's gonna be more for uh, specific to level design, getting into Unreal Engine. There's gonna be a set of Photoshop brushes that I'll give you. So you can click on the Photoshop brushes and download them, it's about a half a gigabyte. And the maps and mapping samples that I'm showing you are available here. So you can actually open up those Photoshop files and look at the layers. The shortcut document here will open up the notes. So I have a few different notes here on the shortcut. So there's a shortcut keys. Uh, the main ones for today though, that we're gonna start with are really the movement and the selection tools and using pos positive negative shape to fill in just with lasso and marquee, the brush tool, the erase tool, we'll use some of the gradient, um, but the shortcut keys are listed here. Uh, as well as uh, different selections for selecting all inverting your selections, doing quick uh, replications, new layers, control shift N for new layer, back and forth, zooming in and out, things like that. Here's uh, all the tools in the main toolbar. And it's pretty standard for the file and the edit sections, but you have those uh, available to you at least so that you can take a look at those. So let's jump right into it in Photoshop. In this first sample, the demo PS mapping 01 document, you have uh, some different maps I collect online. So we have a Call of Duty map right here and a Diablo map and some Dark Souls maps, as well as some Mass Effect maps. And you'll see uh, a lot of these, what you'll notice is it's a really soft kind of even color palette. So contrast is a little mellow. There's some highlights around the edges or some um, color differentiation for above and below going uh, under and, and crisscrossing some of these maps. And you'll also see that there's a quite a variety. And some of the maps are meant for like as player guides, but we're gonna use some of the um, samples here just for breadcrumbing for writing out what you are as a level designer, what your interactive elements are gonna be and what you wanna show off in your maps. And so these are, uh, we're gonna mostly look at the graphic design of these and the color palettes. So those are in the reference folder. But uh, a couple samples that I did prior was a little racing game that I just did like a quick cityscape, uh, made a little grunge map uh, for the background, did a sci-fi bunker, just doing some uh, slices. We're gonna look at the layer styles on that. And so let's jump right into it. So on the first layer up here in demo, I have a gray background. So I like to work on some kind of soft gray. And we're gonna just start off with the first of the tools. So up in, up next to the move tool, which is V, you have M for marquee. Now all these tools, if you hold shift and then press the key again, it's gonna filter through whatever other tools are available under that category. So that's the marquee tool. So if I do the marquee that as it is, it's gonna be an ellipse. Now, if I, I have a free form on there. If I pull and then hold shift, it's gonna make an even expanse there. If I hold shift again, now it's gonna to add to the selection, but I can add to the selection using shift, or as I pull down shift, I can let go and then hit it again and that'll do an even, but it's still gonna add. You see the little plus sign next to it. For all these selection tools for the marquee and the lasso and some others, shift adds and alt will take away. So very quickly, it's like collage cutting. I can make some interesting shapes in here and I'm just using shift to add, like some corridors and maybe a back area over here and alt to take away. Maybe there's an open courtyard or a, um, maybe this is a catwalk that goes around something. 
And then maybe there's another piece out here and I can interconnect that um, with the passage here and here. So this is, uh, I, I wanna avoid being on the gray layer, so I'm just gonna lock that. I'm gonna use the empty layers above it. To make a new layers, control shift N. So we'll do map sample. So I collect the name as I go. And now to fill with your foreground and background colors, if you hit D on the keyboard, that will default to black and white. If you hit X on the keyboard, it's gonna switch back and forth from foreground and background, whatever you have in there. So D to do the default. Alt and delete will fill with the foreground color. Control delete will fill with the background color. So very quickly, I've just made a little map for myself here. And if we are looking at ways to um, move this around, if I hold down spacebar, I can kind of pan back and forth and uh, Z to zoom in and out. I can just scrub back and forth uh, at will there. So spacebar to move around, Z to zoom in and out. And we're just looking so far at the M for marquee tool. So once I have have a map layout, we're just looking at the Photoshop tools. I'm not gonna talk too much about map theory. Uh, we'll do that for the other video. Did that with the pencil and the pens. This is now something we can um, make other tools out of and we can still, as we draw the out these other selection tools, I'm gonna hold down shift again. I can use these selections here and I can actually move them around. And what I put when I put them where I want them to be, say I want cutouts here to go into there, I can hit delete. So you can still go in here and make other selections like that. And maybe take away and then maybe add to it. Now, this is an actual usable piece that I can go in here and I can use it to delete, cut away, or I could go over here to the side here and do control delete or alt delete and add, and use it to add to it. So your selections can all be used in as a, a screen that's really fast and makes it a lot of fun. Control delete. And there's your selection pull down, control A, select all, to deselect, control D. To invert the selection is shift control i and to get all the layers is alt control a and i don't think we have to go through all of them at the moment but control d for sure we use that a lot so as we're going um the other one is uh let me undo that if i hold down alt and drag the marquee it's going to um start from that center point and kind of expand out let me undo that control d if i hold down alt and shift and do it it's going to do it evenly as a rectangle so again that's control d that's hold down alt first click and drag out to go out evenly up and down from that center point and then hold shift while you do it to do uh even on both axes from that central point there we go so i go there and let's do a new layer so control shift n and we'll go map level two there we go and now I have this other selection here and maybe I'm gonna do uh, a level up above this in the center here. So I'll just do a control delete, I'll fill with that. Um, for all of these, we're just playing with really soft colors, trying not to get too crazy with uh, the saturation levels or contrast. Start off really soft and mellow because you want interactive parts to stand out. To change the brightness, I do control U or hue saturation. That is under your layers, I'm sorry, your filters image uh, mode adjustments, I gotta get out of the tool first, my bad. Yeah, that's under um, image adjustments and you'll use control L for levels, control M for curves and control U was I just showing you for a hue saturation, there's control I to invert. So control U and it's the upper level. So let's make it a little bit uh, lighter or darker. Let's go with uh, something a little bit darker than both the background and the level above it. Let's see, something like that. There we go. Now, if I want that background color to be darker, I can unlock it, hit control U, and I think I'm gonna do that right now. And let's kind of get it to where, okay, these other map layers are gonna be more visible up above here. So that way I can take this one here and we can kind of bring it back to where, what we were doing there, right about there. And this one below it is a little bit light. So control U and drop it down a little bit. Try to make sure it doesn't fade out too much. There we go. And with the V, with the move tool selected, if you do auto select, you'll notice here, I have this on one layer, this upper level, map level two, and then I have the map sample here. If uh, I have auto select on, 
to layer, it's going to automatically go to the layer with that object. You see it's popping back and forth right here from the upper level and then to the lower one. And that lets me go directly to that level, that layer, move that piece of the level over here, go over here, grab and move that one as well. The other tool that's super useful is probably the most useful tool that's got uh, the most functionality is Control T. That's your free transform tool. Right, so from the free transform, you can right click inside of there. You can right click inside of the free transform tool and you have access to all of the uh, edit transform tools. So you have scale, rotate, skew, warp, perspective, rotate, flip horizontal, flip vertical. And um, I can kind of at will, I can skew, bend it in both directions if you want that even. Again, it's shift to move it evenly and move that around. And if I want to rotate it, and as I hold shift, it'll snap in even increments for me. Get over here. And I'm just trying to stay away from the border a little bit. So I'm already kind of working big because I want it to show up on screen. Hit V on the keyboard, go back to this level here. Go tr T, Control T, Transform. And I can skew this little block. And since we're just working with uh, solid fill colors so far, uh, this is going to be no problem at all. All right, so that is a little overview of just the marquee tool. Let's switch over to the lasso tool. So I go to L and now I can go to control shift, do another level. We'll do this uh, organic parts, uh, oh, oh, arts. <laughs> and now I can draw blobs here, same thing. Control alt to fill with my foreground color and alt delete, I'm sorry, uh, control delete to fill foreground, alt delete to fill with the foreground. Control delete to fill with the background. And then control U if I want to darken or lighten that up. So, so maybe the rock elements I'll have as darker pieces. Uh, I can carve away, same thing. I can just kind of go in with my lasso tool and carve back away from this. Like that, hit delete, control D to deselect, delete. And it's... Uh, you know, it's different than drawing or painting. It's, it really gives you a lot of flexibility in grabbing and move these pieces around. Now, if I want to move this, I'm still in the lasso tool that lets you move, or if I'm in the marquee tool, you can move it. But if I want to move the pixels inside the selection, I switch to the move tool and you'll see it scissors appear there. Now it's going to automatically cut away whatever was in there. And then I can let go of that and go back to L, back to my lasso tool or back to my marquee tool. And you see it's still selected. So I have to deselect that now. And go back in here and I can kind of chisel away. If you want some sharper pieces in there, remember you have the shift and then the command key, shift L goes to polygonal lasso. This can let me tap and do a little bit of a sawtooth here. It's a little finicky. And then if, if you can't get to, to close it with a circle, just hit enter as you get close. And then I can delete that and I can grab this piece and control T, I can move that around. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> I got a little too fancy with it. And then I, if I have these pieces here, enter and delete. So um, this is on its own layer now. And same thing, control T, I can move this around. And we can control D, I'm sorry, control J will replicate the layer. So control J, you'll see it just made a copy of that layer and I can move this around and do some jaggedy. Control J again, move it around. Control T to transform. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of making an organic entryway that might go into uh, this open area that I have here. This big cube here isn't really doing anything just quite yet. So I'm just gonna leave that for right now and maybe um, we'll start cutting that up here in just a moment. And yeah, and if we're not going to use it for right now, I'll just kind of move that out of the way. And so this is still on uh, auto select for the layer. So I can just kind of move these pieces around. And if I get a piece, I like, if I want to pick a piece uh, that other pixels on there to copy and paste or within the level, if I hold down control and hover over the layer, see the little hand turns into a marquee selector, that'll automatically select what's in there. I can do control C, control V. It's another way to do kind of a, a similar thing in there. There we go. Now, if uh, I like what uh, this piece looks like, I can always uh, turn off the gray background. Let's see if I, we got, there we go. 
And if I want to make this into a, a custom brush tip, we can select this piece. I usually hold it as a square, so I just marquee select down there. Go to Edit and Define Brush Preset, and you'll see this will be my rock border brush. There we go. And you'll see it appears I have my brush settings here. The windows, the brush settings are under F5 for the brush settings and the brushes themselves as palettes right here. I have all the brushes right there. Now, the main thing to, if you want to use this, let me hit control D to deselect. If I want to put this on, it's going to kind of smear it, right? So the stamping, the separation, that's the very first thing you want to uh, go to. So brush tip shape, spacing, let's space it out a little bit like that. And it's going to do the same thing the pieces so if i did like rocks uh this is like a mountain pass around the side you see the uh, alpha stamp on that if it's not 100 percent black it's not gonna stamp 100 percent so it looks kind of like a puzzle piece for right now so we don't quite want that right so shape dynamics here we want this to kind of alternate and make some variety in there so we'll go to the size jitter so at least they go to size uh, variety we can do angle jitter so they kind of spin around at random angles we can also have them scatter on both axes just a little bit and then maybe uh, maybe crank the spacing back down a bit, something like that. And now you'll see I'm getting, you know, this different spacing and stamping and re a repetition of that pattern. So you space bar to move that out a little bit here. And any brush that you make using the alpha using these shapes can be also turned into a, an eraser. Uh, just about any brush tip shape can be. Okay. So that is quite a bit of information. Let me see up here. Um, if you want to take away, you could just uh, simply click on the layer you want to take away and just hit the delete key. And if I want to continue with these shapes, they're still on their own layer. I can move those around some more. Okay, the next uh, piece that we noticed in the reference images uh, are some of the borders that are on there, especially in the uh, mass effect lab and the dark so you see a little pen stripe on there so let's go look at those for just a moment so let me turn those back off again and we can move these pieces around so to do that i we use a what's called a layer style so if you're familiar as a graphics center web designer you know layer styles are used an awful lot in production so right click on the layer you want to put the style at the border the background the drop shadow just right click on it and go to blending options and you get to your layer style menu. So the layer style, the most common way to do this is really straightforward. You could do color overlay or gradient overlay if you want to. So if I do color overlay, if you want to actually control the color through this and then apply it to the other ones that you put on there, you can go in here and maybe give it like a light blue, desaturated, something like that. And then if you want to border around that, then that would be done with the stroke is right here. You usually do the stroke on the outside and then you go see it's a little bit darker. I've already been kind of playing around with it. Just a few pixels works. Uh, I'm working at a really high pixel resolution, so I have it cranked up to seven at the moment. And that works really nicely. If I add any other color to this, so let's, uh, and you have the options right here. So I could turn the color lay overla uh, overlay off. I can color pick this color back. So you see it's like a light gray using I on the keyboard to change my colors. So I'm gonna fill with these more with these colors, switch back to my marquee tool, and I wanna continue and do like a little border wall here with maybe some ramparts or some sort of um, pillars that go down the side of a mountain cliff or something like that. There we go. Continue over here. And just holding down shift, you see the plus sign, that means we get the shift button going. And say I wanna connect right there. Okay, just do the uh, tr same trick we've been doing, which is Alt-Delete to fill with foreground, Control-D to deselect. You see it automatically put that layer effect on anything that we're adding to this. I'm just doing Alt-Delete, Alt-Delete, Alt-Delete. So you don't have to go and retrace everything. And it's dynamic, so you can go in there and back to the stroke and you can change that at any time. And you see I have a sci-fi bunker, like some background, pieces using some blues. So map out lots of different things inside the mapping um, mapping design document. 
you'll notice you have uh, the world of level design doc. So this is your brainstorming exploration. There's 121 level design game environment uh, locations. Uh, brainstorm off this. This is a great resource of real world places that might give you, uh, you know, try one of each <laughs> in your career. You know, it's constantly explore new places and new settings and each real new real world reference that you use will expand your horizons and your uh, creativity and um, can it give you new possibilities. Let's do the same thing with our rocks. So I'm just going to go. Uh, now, if we want to save that style and want to apply it to other layers, what we do is go into the FX, open that up, and just go new style and just name it. Well, so I'll just call this one building uh, style. I hit OK. And you'll see if I go up here to styles now, that appears as the latest one right here. So if I wanted to go to one of these rocks, let's say I'm going to hit OK and grab one of these rocks here and just right click. Whoops, wrong. Blending options. Go to style, grab that latest one, and you'll see it applied the same border around it. And I must have, yeah, I forgot to turn the color overlay back on but it's still in there. I just didn't turn it on yet. So same thing over here. If we wanted to turn that back on, we could turn those on and off. So now the rock board over there is the same one, but maybe we want to do a different one for the rocks, right? So let me um, just delete that layer completely. So delete should work when we just delete the layer. Oh, I'm kind of stuck, stuck in there. Yeah. Okay, let me come back to that one and grab this one here and let's do a different one on the rock. So for that one, we'll go to blending options. And for that one, maybe the color overlay will do something like really dark gray, something like that. And we'll give it a outer stroke or regular stroke here of, uh, we'll go like nearly pitch black with it. And I try not to use pure black or pure white too much. That gives you the option to always go a little tiny bit lighter or darker when needed. There we go. So now I have this nice, Kind of, oh, I had this, this select on. That's why it wasn't working. There we go. Delete that one. So this now, if I put this rocky border with this uh, black outline, it, I'll get a really nice outline. And I can continue off of that with the Wacom tablet and with the lasso tool. So I can go in here and shift L a little bit until I get to where I want. And I could go in here and kind of maybe put some other rock formations and I'm not trying too hard to make anything uh, nice at all. I'm just kind of showing you how the tool works here. Alt to take away if it gets too close to the buildings and carve that back out again. And you'll discover as you're doing this, you'll, you'll discover some shapes that look a little nicer and you'll go back and maybe touch up an idea that you're liking on this. There we go. And try and avoid things too rounded or too dippy on there. Okay. And then do alt delete. Let me turn off that color overlay. You can see it's not the same darkness. So I'll go I, click on that one, alt delete. There we go. And now it has the same color. And if it uh, doesn't, whoops. What just happened? Yeah. If it doesn't um, fill in all the way, you can always just go in there with your brush tool and you can pull up uh, one of the regular brushes that you have here and just kind of fill in that using B, the brush. And you can continue that. So the layer style is gonna continue. So if I have the brush out and I have a 100% opacity brush here and use the brush settings, go to the shape dynamic. So it goes thin to thick based on my pen pressure. And I could do a minimum diameter if I don't want it to have any sharp points. I can go in here and actually draw you see it's it's uh, automatically updating the outline for it. And same thing with the erase brush. You see, I have this one here. Let's see what this one does. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's doing all kinds of interesting stuff to it in there. It's one of the little grunge brushes that we had. There we go. Okay, so I would say just make a ton of maps if you want to do like buildings and structures or organics just using these pieces and that should be enough to get you started for making some nice maps in Photoshop.